Daniel here for Tabletop for One and Tabletop for Tuesdays with the 5 after 5 preview of Dreams of Yesterday. Now, Dreams of Yesterday is published by Weird Draft Games and is currently on Backer Kit right now. I advise you just go ahead and stop the video, go check out the Backer Kit. I have the link in my description and see if it's a game that you want to bag. It's only about $9. But it, it's definitely something to look at as a small box, carry-in-your-pocket kind of game. And now Dreams of Yesterday is a set collection game as you're trying to build out your exhibit and compete for the best-looking exhibit, collecting sets of different artifacts and fossils and portraits and other things, and competing out for the, the different cards in this really neat little rondelle drafting mechanism. And so after five plays, I have five things for you to consider when backing this game. First, let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay in Dreams of Yesterday is qu very quick. On each turn, you're choosing one of two cards on the field in, in the area called the Histories, and you're going to choose in a clockwise order between those cards. And so from the empty space in the History, you're going to go one or two spaces and choose the card that you want to add to your tableau. If it's an artifact card, you got to pay for it with resources. If it's a resource card, you just add it to your storehouse. And then you're going to draw one card from the deck and add it to the histories, choosing which side you want the card to be on. It adds for this really interesting element of, of deciding how to place the card. Maybe it's a card you want later, and so you place it that face up in hopes that you'll gain it, but you also want to watch out for the opponent. The opponent might pick up a card you'd like. And so there's some really interesting decision making there. And with that, let's talk about the AI opponent. Now the AI opponent follows a couple priority charts. It's going to choose its action based off of how many resource cards it has at that time. If it has a certain amount of resource cards, it'll buy an artifact. If it has one or two resource cards, it's going to go based off of what the top card is on the deck, and then it's going to choose its action that way. It also has a priority when placing it out on its tableau, when uh, replacing a card on the histories track. But all in all, after a couple games, it's really easy to implement and doesn't take much memorization. And so for number three, let's talk about the value. This is a very inexpensive game. I mean, granted, it's only a few cards, but we're talking about, you know, the, the cost of like a button shy game. And it comes in this nice little wallet size case. Now, the case is supposed to be a little bit larger when, uh, when they produce it, but it's supposed to be very similar. And this case is just slightly smaller than my wallet. It's something that I can easily carry around and have available wherever I go. The table space doesn't take up too much table space, and it's just a, it's a lot of value for what you get. It's, it's exactly what you would expect from a, a button-shy game, but Weird Giraffe is putting out their own small box games, and I'm very happy with the value that you get out of this purchase. And so for number four, let's talk about the replayability. Now, I've played it actually probably 10 times, maybe 12. I'm not sure. I lost count because it's a very quick game. It takes about 20 minutes or so to play. In the solo mode, it might take a little bit longer in two-player, but the solo mode is rather quick. You are you pick out your card, draft it, go to the AI. The AI is very quick, 5-10 seconds, and it's back to your turn. So cycling through the game goes very quick. At the beginning of the game, you're going to remove five cards from the deck randomly. That's going to change what cards are available during the game. And so you're not going to see the same game twice. It gives you a decent amount of variability. And on top of that, it could, it could change how the game starts. Because you have to remove also at the beginning of the game all the earned cards. Now if there are a lot of earned cards based off the card distribution, then that starting deck is going to be small. And so your choices are going to be very crucial and, and few until the earns get shuffled in. And I've had a few games like that, and it really changes the gameplay and provides a different dynamic than if there are less earned cards, which makes you want to watch out for those earned cards and try and get them when you can. And so there's some really good replayability there, and I, I can see myself playing this quite a lot more than I already have. And so for number five, we're going to talk about the two-player mode. And so sorry solo players, but 
There is a fantastic two-player mode, and I highly recommend it here. The, it, it's very similar to the solo mode. It's just you're going to have your second player, and, and watching them make that choice of choosing which card, and you're sitting there going, oh, please don't take that card, please don't take that card. Seeing how they build out their tableau and trying to counter them as you work around this rondelle, it's a it's a very very head to head game and and it's it can be uh, you can block each other really well it can be a little little bit of a fight uh, for those cards but it, it's fantastic it, it provides a great experience in the two player and I highly recommend it as a two player game even if you don't play it as a solo game I very much like this game. I, I think there is a lot of value here. I, I plan on replaying it, assuming I get to keep this copy. I don't know yet. But I think the game has a lot to offer. It has a decent amount of replayability. has beautiful art. has a lot of really good things going for it. And so if you like this kind of game, I highly recommend it. And you should definitely check it out. And so this has been a 5 after 5 preview for Dreams of Yesterday, which is currently on Backerkit. Please check out the link in my description below. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below, and I thank you very much for watching Tabletop for One. Have a great night.